Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben. Nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other health care practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy. I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system, it's designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business formulations, skin health ingredients, anything we're talking about on the program, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, head over to truthtreatments.com. Make sure you check out our Retinol 5% Gel, as well as our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. We also have a blog at truthtreatments.com, and you can check that out as well. Do skin, skin health posts periodically, and I also have a blog at criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com, where you can purchase longevity products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. Pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, also brightsideben.com. You can call the Brightside Ben phone team also at 866-735-2470. Tell them you want to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, make some money selling longevity products, and get your products at the wholesale price. Call the phone team at 866-735-2470 if you're interested. Okay, so last we spoke, we were talking about the idea of using drugs and medical treatments based on standard protocols and using diagnostics and devices rather than looking at the body itself of the individual. I remember working as a pharmacist back in the 19, late 1980s, early 1990s. I was in this little town in Colorado, and periodically there would be a winter storm. And after a winter storm, almost always there would be a flu or a cold epidemic that followed, and the pharmacy would be packed with people who were coming in to fill their prescriptions, maybe 100, 150 a day sometimes. And it was just me and a, a little pharmacy tech, and we'd be filling scripts all day long and answering the phone all day long. Folks, be very nice to your pharmacist because he's really overworked. I can tell you that for, from experience. Anyway. So 100 people, 150 people, they come in the pharmacy all day long, in and out, in and out. They line up, they hand me their script, I fill the medicine, and they pick it up and pay for it. And what these people didn't know is that almost everybody who was coming in for cough, for for a flu or a cold was getting the exact same medicine, the exact same prescription. Women, men, kids, old people, young people, they were all getting a script for an antibiotic and a cough suppressant. Everybody. Moxicillin. Almost always it was amoxicillin, and sometimes it was uh, uh, the cough syrup they give you, something called Tussianax or Phenergan. Always amoxicillin and then either Phenergan or Tussianax. It was like a ritual. It was like water and wine. Now, do you suppose that all these people had exactly the same biochemistry and exactly the same medical needs and exactly the same type of illness? No, human beings are individuals, but the medicines are not individualized. In hospitals, in managed care, in the The practice of medicine in general, there are formularies, there are menus, there are ways that we are treated that are standardized. All diagnoses receive the same medicines and all surgeries, uh, uh, surgeries as well. Surgeries join in with these these, uh, diagnoses and medical protocols in general, testing, devices. The idea of a standard treatment for every diagnosis 
is a part of heart health, it's part of skin health, it's part of inflammatory diseases. And the treating, treatment of inflammatory diseases is part of treating autoimmune disease, it's part of treating cancer. It's called functional medicine or clinical medicine. And it represents a lack of thoughtfulness and it enriches and it entrenches the medical model without improving our health. This is one of the major reasons why health is a, healthcare is a failure because of standardized care based on diagnostic, based on formularies. It's created this idea of medicine, this institutionally institutionalized idea of medicine has created, maybe not created, but it's resulted in some measure at least in a health crisis, a degenerative disease health crisis that has never been seen in the history of man. This is what our medical model is presiding over. Every single chronic degenerative disease is increasing, every single one. Even as we have more drugs and more insurance and more doctors and more health awareness. So what is it that our multi-trillion, $3.5 trillion in healthcare costs? That's what we spend every year. This is, an this is a mind-boggling number. Three and a half trillion dollars, nearly a quarter of our economy is spent on healthcare. How could we be this sick? Where are we gone for all this? We got more drugs, we got more surgeries, we got more diagnostics, and we got more health misery. Ten thousand dollars per man, woman, and child. Four billion prescriptions. Twelve prescriptions per man, woman, and child. Fifty percent of Americans have at least one chronic degenerative disease. Twenty-five percent of Americans have at least two chronic degenerative diseases. How can we possibly be this sick in a world of technological advances that is so mind-boggling, so stunning? We can manipulate atomic matter. We can we can create brand new materials from scratch. We can travel to the stars. We can leave the solar system. How can we possibly be so broken down? What is wrong with this picture? Well, the answer, at least partially, is in the institution of medicine. It's in the model of medicine. Not the individual doctors. Not, you know, we got we to gotta separate the individual, as always, from the institution. Just like there's individual patients and there's the institution of medicine, there's individual doctors. And there's the institution of medicine. And the doctors are just as much a victim, many times. This whole notion of functional medicine or clinical chemistry medicine is not only about shortcuts, it's not only about laziness, medical laziness, it's also about the system. It's about making the system stronger. It's about making people weaker and the system stronger. It's about empowering institutions like the government and the medical model, the institution of medicine, even as it disempowers us. And this is what Obama cares about. It pretends to be about people, but in reality, it's about entrenching government-mandated health care, empowering drug companies, device manufacturers, diagnostic companies, and it allows the medical model to establish something called standards of care. This is an official legal term, standards of care. Standards of care is a legal definition or a, a legal mandate that compels doctors to treat patients in a standard way. You go to the doctor, he takes a blood test, and based on the results, he has to treat you a certain way or he can lose his license. Or worse, he can go to jail. Standards of care are the intersection between medicine and law. It's how malpractice is determined via this, this standards of care standard. It tells the doctor what he has to do based on what tests he, the results of what tests he gave you, you know, what his diagnosis is. This is why we have diagnosis, so we can, we can apply standards of care. It's an official term. And who is it that sets the standards of care? Medical boards, doctors, drug companies, insurance companies, all people who are, have financial interest in the standards of care. This is not a good thing, people. This is definitely not a good thing. It means that if a doctor doesn't follow standards of care, which the insurance company set up for him, which the uh, medical boards, which are made up of doctors set up for him, the doctor is legally liable for malpractice. He can go to jail. He can lose his license. He could be penalized. And this is how doctors, even the well-meaning doctors, are kept in line by the threat of, uh, of, of legal prosecution, literally legal prosecution for violating standards of care. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 831-685-1080. I'm sorry, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. 
are back on the bright side. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com, also benfuchsarchives.com. And if you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And if you'd like to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, like so many of you guys have already purchased, and lots of you guys have all repurchased and repurchased, thank you so much for that. We're doing our, it's our first year in business, well, celebrating the Truth's uh, first, first birthday or first anniversary tomorrow, actually. Um, anyway, truth, truth, truthtreatments.com, that's plural, truthtreatments.com. Make sure you check out our retinol 5% gel. Not going to see that anywhere, folks. No oil, no wax, no filler, no fragrance, no preservative, no nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any truth treatment products, just active and functional ingredients. And that's all you should be paying for. All right, so standards of care. Love that term, standards of care. This is how criminal liability of a physician is determined if you violate standards of care. And it's not just uh, physicians either. Nurses have to follow standards of care too. Pharmacists, as far as I know, don't. I've never had to, had to do that. We're just basically dispensing things, not necessarily caring for patients. But nurses and, uh, and doctors and probably other healthcare professionals, I'm assuming, have to deal with this, this arbitrary standard called standards of care. Otherwise, they can be they can be go to, they can go to jail. They can uh, be, held, be held legally liable for malpractice. They can lose their license, and this is how doctors are kept in line. It's a threat of legal action. It's a threat of being sued. This makes the doctor beholden not to the patient but to the medical model. You see what's happening here? It's not about the patient anymore. That's the problem. It's not about the patient. It's about the model. Standards of care are determined by medical boards, government committees, insurance companies, drug companies. And whether they're in the patient's interests or the interests of the, of the model, the, it's not exactly clear. You know, if push comes to shove and there's a debate about whose interest it's going to be in, I don't think the patient's going to win that battle. If it's between cost and the patient, I don't think the patient is going to come out on the, on the, high, uh, the high end there. This is why patients get the same medicines. This is why it's a cost issue, especially if you're going to an HMO. If you go to an HMO, the doctor's not working for you. He's working for the HMO, and he's beholden to the medical model. And this is what accounts for the utter failure, utter, complete, abject failure of the medical model when it comes to treating chronic degenerative disease. Standard of care is what determines what the doctor's going to do. In legal terms, it's defined as the level at which the average prudent provider, whatever that means, in a given community would practice. And it's how the medical model keeps its members in line. It's why doctors don't practice intuitively or creatively. They're not, that's why they're not really doing health care. They're doing managed care. That's what managed care is about. It's why they operate as a herd. It's why patients are not treated as individuals, but treated as part of a medical herd themselves. You got problem A, we give drug B. It's the essence of allopathic medicine. It's what allopathic medicine is about. You got this problem, we give you this protocol. Standards of care is why diagnostics are so treasured and so honored and so sanctified by the medical community. It's how they justify what they do. Diagnosis your diagnosis, we always say on this program, part of the, one of the major ideas of reversing degenerative disease is to ignore your diagnosis. Yes, your diagnosis doesn't matter. It's only there to determine standards of care. That's all. As far as reversal of disease, it doesn't matter what your disease is named. The name of the disease or the particular geography on your body does not matter from a reversal and healing perspective, healing perspective for restoring the body back to wholeness. It diverts it. It diverts us, but it's how standards of care work. So they have to have a diagnosis. Once you get a diagnosis, you're in the system, folks. You've you're got a number, you got a special code, it gets plugged into the computer, you get special benefits, the government pays for certain things, the insurance companies pays for, pay for other things. I was just reading an article about how they want to reclassify diabetes, type 1 and type 2 diabetes. The problem with type 1 and type 2 diabetes is even though type 1 diabetes is so-called autoimmune and type 2 is just a long-term aging thing, the end result is the same thing. You don't treat them differently. 
And so what's happening now is, is with, with type 1 diabetes, insurance companies will pay for some drugs, but not other drugs. So doctors are freaking out. So they want it all reclassified. Because at the end of the day, you use the same medicine. At the end of the day, it's the same protocol for type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Well, guess what? At the end of the day, it's the same protocol for pretty much everything. It's what I call the bright side philosophy. That's the protocol for pretty much everything. There's not 12,800 different diseases like the, the World Health Organization tells us. There's one in terms of chronic degenerative progressive disease that gets worse and worse and worse where we break down. There's only one disease. It's called MBFA, my body is falling apart disease. That's the only disease. And I'm being facetious here, but from a reversal perspective, that's all we have to know. If it's the brain, you'll call it Alzheimer's. If it's the, uh, another part of the brain, you'll call it Parkinson's. If it's the nerves, you'll call it multiple sclerosis. If it's the kidneys, you'll call it glomular nephritis. If it's the, uh, you know, the bones, you'll call it osteoporosis. The liver, you'll call it liver disease. If it's the pancreas, you'll call it type 1 diabetes. It doesn't matter what you call it or where it is. Standards of care are... You, uh, require us to have a diagnosis. Without a diagnosis, there's no standards. That's why you go to the doctor complaining your muscle pain. He says, oh, you have fibromyalgia, which means muscle pain. So you go in to tell him, you go into the doctor, you tell me I have muscle pain, and he tells you, oh, you have muscle pain, but he says it in Latin. So you have a diagnosis. Why does he do that? So you can go into the system. Muscle pain doesn't go into the system. Fibromyalgia does. You got a spinal cord that's inflamed, it's losing its shape, and he says, oh, you have ankylosing spondylitis, which means spinal cord is inflamed and losing its shape in Latin. Why? Because they can't fit spinal cord is inflamed and losing its shape into the computer. It's too long. They have to standardize it. So it becomes ankylosing spondylitis, but it's just the same thing. By giving you a diagnosis, he can go to the recipe, he can look at the book and see what standards of care are for that diagnosis. And if he doesn't do it, he can be sued. He can lose his license. He can go to jail. So standards of care involves how we practice medicine, and it's how physicians are kept in line. Standards of care is how the legal system interfaces with the medical system. State attorney generals, government agents show up unannounced at facilities with badges and subpoenas and sometimes with automatic weapons, shutting down offices, threatening health care providers, threatening doctors with cr uh, prosecution as well as prison time. And interestingly, even though we have all these standards of care, medical negligence is the third leading cause of death in the country. After heart, after cancer and heart, after heart disease and cancer, the third leading cause of death is medical negligence, even with our standards of care. So they don't even work. Malpractice, which is defined as a violation of standard standard of care, malpractice incidences rates are increasing. Medical malpractice insurance premiums are increasing too. Healthcare costs are increasing. That means windfalls for everybody, except for us, except for the consumer who's not getting any healthier but sicker and more cut up and more drug. And that's really what this thing is all about. And that's why I do this program every day. We gotta wake up people. If we're not healthy, it ain't a doctor issue. And we're not gonna get healthy by going to the doctor or by taking drugs. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. Back on the bright side, I am Pharmacist Benny. 442366010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. If you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you in just a moment. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products or join the Bright Side Ben team, you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to my blogs, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website or by phoning, or you can purchase products right off the website as well. Okay, from the University of Dundee in Glasgow, vitamin pill could prevent heart attacks and strokes in people with kidney disease. Do you know one out of 10 Americans has kidney disease? One third, nearly a third of Americans who are over the age of 65 has kidney disease. It's an epidemic. 60,000 people a year die from kidney disease. And now it turns out that a vitamin pill could prevent heart attacks and strokes, one of the leading causes of death in, in people with kidney disease. It's vitamin K. 
Yes, vitamin K. The one they tell you not to take when you're on a blood thinning drug for your heart. Vitamin K, as it turns out, is just as or probably more important for your heart than a blood thinning drug. Not that, you know, you, sometimes you need a blood thinning drug if, you, if your blood is so clotted up. Vitamin K is a clotting vitamin, so when you're on warfarin or, or Plavix or, or, or uh, Pradaxa, they'll tell you not to take vitamin K, but vitamin K does a lot of things. Vitamin K is important for your bones. Vitamin K is important for, uh, for prostate disease, for lung cancer, for leukemia, for brain health issues, for tooth decay. Vitamin K is an incredibly, incredibly important vitamin. There's three different kinds. Well, basically two. But thir the third, vitamin K, there's K1, K2, and K3. K3 is a drug form. Uh, but, but two nutritional forms, K1 and K2. K1 is found in plants, your green leafy vegetables, which is one of the major reasons why you want to be eating your kale and your spinach and all your other green leafies, arugula and such. The darker the color, by the way, the more, the more vitamin K activity you're going to have typically. The second kind is made in your gut by vitamin K2. But of course, because we drink chlorinated water and we brush our teeth with fluoride and we got fluoride in the water and antibiotics in the water, et cetera, et cetera, our intestines aren't healthy, a lot of us aren't making vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is what cleans our, our blood. It prevents calcification. It actually keeps calcium where it needs to be. Vitamin K1 is a blood clotting vitamin. Vitamin K2 is a calcium vitamin. Now, there's different kinds of vitamin K2. You'll hear terms like MK4 and MK7. Uh, MK4 is synthetic. MK7, that's, the, that, that's probably the best one to look for is MK7, vitamin, uh, vitamin K2, MK7. You'll see it on the label. It'll say MK4 or MK7. Look for K2 and MK7 if you're going to supplement. According to this article from the University of Dundee, vitamin K actually can help prevent heart attacks and strokes if you're dealing with kidney disease. And if you are dealing with kidney disease, understand that you can do a lot of things. Most especially, keep the blood clean. The kidney filters the blood. Kidney disease is a classic sign of blood that is toxic and dirty. And sugar counts. Sugar counts as a major blood toxin. It's clumped, thick blood. That's what causes kidney disease. It's no wonder we have an epidemic because we got an epidemic of dirty blood. And if, if uh, there's only one disease, MBFA disease, my body is falling apart disease, it is always preceded by dirty blood. Thus the importance of digestive health because that's how the blood becomes toxic in the first place. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Aldo in Texas, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side, buddy. What's going on, Aldo? Aldo. Aldo, do we have Aldo? Aldo? Yes. Yes, sir, what's yes. going on? How can we help you? What's going on, man? Hi, how are you today? Doing good. Oh, well, I have been, I have been having a problem with my stomach for a long, long time. Okay. Nice. And now is the worst. I like anything that I ate. It affects me. Anything, okay. Almost okay. anything. So. Okay. Now you don't. You say the stomach, but you don't mean the stomach. There's a. You mean the intestine, probably. It doesn't happen as soon as you yeah, eat. It happens testing, later. Testing okay, good. I want to get that clear because. And even I get a ball in the meal on the stomach. I get a ball there. That easy. Hear me when I touch. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy. Easy. To handle. We'll handle that easy. You want me to? I'll tell you how to get rid of it right away. You ready? I'm going to okay. tell you how to get rid of it right away, instantly. Ready? Get a pen. You're writing yeah. this? I want you to write this. Here's how you do it. Yeah. Okay? Stop eating. That's it. Okay. Okay. No eat, no problem. Now, I'm teasing a little bit, a little bit, because when you stop eating, you're not going to have a problem. That's a fact. But mm -hmm. you do obviously have to eat again, right? Okay? Yes. So you stop eating for a couple of days. That's, you just do a fast. Okay. You can call Longevity. Uh, you can call 866-735-2470. Uh, tell them you want the Swero V. And that's, that'll help you get through the fact. Swero V. S-U-E-R-O. Yeah. Uh, turn the radio off, bro. Aldo, Aldo, turn that off. The radio. Oh, okay. I'm just talking on my phone. I don't have any radio. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I got a little echo there. Uh, tell them you want the Swero V. And you're going to do half a bottle of Swero V every hour for two days that you're up. Now, if you don't want to do the Swero V, it's not the end of the world. But the Swero V make it easier for you. All right, then when you start eating again, this is what's going to happen. You want to pick one food that you love the most, that you eat all the time, right? And you're going, to eat, yeah. uh, you're going to eat it all day or eat as much of it as you want. And you're going to write down how you feel, okay? I guarantee it's going to be a problem. If it's not, you're okay with that food. But almost 100% guar guarantee it's going to be a problem. Then you're going to eliminate that food. And you're going to keep doing that until you isolate the problem foods and you get rid of them. 
Now, and grain is going to probably be a problem. Flour, cereals, gluten, all that stuff is going to probably be a problem. It may be eggs. It may be dairy, cheese. I don't know. But that's a classic sign of a problem there. The next thing you're going to do at the same time you should be doing this is take care of the gut with probiotics, first of all. Get the nightly essence. Do three capsules three times a day. Start eating ground up fermented vegetables if you can. You know how to make sauerkraut or anything like that, fermented vegetables, fermented pickles or fermented beets or something like that. You know how to do that? No, really. Okay. No. So all you do, so just get sauerkraut. Don't even bother. Just get sauerkraut, but get good sauerkraut and eat as much. You know what that is? Eat as much as you can. Get it at a health food store. Good, good organic sauerkraut. Make vegetable okay. juices. Make vegetable juices and do lots of chicken soup with the bone. With, these are all soothing foods for the gut, for the intestine, because chances are pretty good you got some damage in there. All right? Okay. Last but not least, if you want, get uh, use aloe, noni, and the Z-radical, which you get from Longevity, or the Fucoid Z, if, which you get from Longevity. If you don't do Longevity, get the noni, go get, get some noni juice and aloe juice. And that has a tremendously valuable soothing effect for the intestine. All right? I guarantee you, if you do everything I told you, you're going to be a new man in 30 days. Most especially the food elimination. Well, how about the tangy tangerine? It's no tangy tangerine is great. You need the mighty 90 essential nutrients. I'm just focusing on the belly now, on your intestine right now. On the Absolutely. Belly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's there's the, many more uh, things you could do. Of... There's there's many more things you could do. You probably have other health issues, but that's gonna that'll start you off. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anything okay. else, bro? So... Anything else, Aldo? No. I'm okay. Good, I'm good, good deal. Good. Have a good day, man. Good to talk to you. Thank you, Aldo. Thanks. All right. Uh, let's go to Texas, Brenda. What's going on? Hello. Hello, Brenda. Is it Brenda or Brenda? Brenda. Brenda. How you doing this morning, Brenda? Oh, I'm great. Good. Um, and I was going to talk about my husband's issue, and we are on the Longevity product as of about eight and a half months, and been gluten free. Nice. And How you feeling? How are you feeling? Well, I'm feeling. We're feeling better. Much better. Okay, hang on, Brenda. We got to take a commercial. Uh, hang on, we'll get to you first up when we come back, okay? Don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got a couple lines open. Brenda in Texas. What yes. is going on? Proceed. So okay. you're on the Longevity products for eight months. And yes. you're doing better. And- and yes, we feel better, and we've been on, you know, don't eat the 10 bad food list that Dr. Wallach has out and all. 12 okay. now, but, you know, the 10, 12, absolutely no fried foods, all all that. And um, I have celiac, and so I've been, you know, gluten-free for almost two, two years, but my husband's been gluten-free for a good year now or whatever, and like I say, we feel like we're eating really clean and healthy, you know, for the most part. And okay. uh, and yet he had been on Nexium for several years for bad reflux. And okay. so we started, once we got on the longevity product, you know, trying to wean him off that and everything. And he was... He was kind of taking one ever two to three days or whatever, you know, okay. and still having reflux. And then even once um, Dr. Glidden said, well, increase the liquid calcium. And and we did that for two or three months there, whatever. And still it's having like, the reflux. Yes. And so, okay. he, you know, he kept trying to go longer without taking the next day. Uh, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you right away. I'm going to help you like I just helped the other guy, like okay. Aldo, who just called. Uh-huh. Okay? you got to tr- you got to link it to food. And the way you do it is by stopping eating. He's not going to have heartburn if he stops eating. Okay? Mm-hmm. Unless he has a very, very serious case or, you know, Barrett's esophagus, which can happen. Sometimes people he get does, heartburn. He does have Barrett's esophagus. Okay. He had uh, scope a, almost a year ago. and Well, a year and a half ago, I guess. And he had... Yes. Does water do it? Does, you know, does, does any? Is it, will he get heartburn from just water, or reflux mm-hmm. from just water? Well, I don't know. Just okay. Water. All right. Well, here's but what you want to really, do. Really, like if he takes the when the, the tangy tangerine, it's yeah. like that. Just really with that. All right. All right. All right. That has to do with how he's bro- his body's processing what he's putting in his mouth. Mm-hmm. Heartburn is a processing issue. It's processing of substances. Now, when it gets really bad, sometimes people can't even do water. Has he tried apples, by the way? Mm, no. Okay, that's I the first thing. Apple. 
five a day. <laughs> well, try have him do an apple. Apple can can do miraculous things for heartburn. But if he's got a problem that's this progressive, that's been going on for this long, and he's by the way, Barrett's esophagus for the listeners is when basically the esophagus burns from all the acid, and it's mm-hmm. a serious problem. Mm-hmm. So if he's got Barrett's esophagus. Um, he's, it's been going on for a while. Uh, he may need some some serious measures here. So, uh, what you want to do is control what you can control, and that means the foods he's eating. See if he can link it to problem foods. All right, specific foods. Notice if sometimes grains. It's the same thing. What happens is when you have these reflux issues, there's pressure that builds up from the bottom. The bottom is where the intestine is, underneath the stomach. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And you get pressure building upwards. And that pressure is caused by how food is processed, usually at the intestinal level, and typically will involve those good bacteria in there. So it has to do with the reaction between the foods he's eating and something in his digestive system. So by eliminating the foods, that should go away. The, the, the response should go away. It's a reaction. So what you want to do is you want to take care of the action that's causing the reaction. Foods, number one. So do a food diary and start to eliminate problem foods, okay? You follow me on this? Uh-huh. Okay. The second thing he wants to do is start to restore the health of the intestine. Are you on the nightly essence? Well, I have been. He no, him. Been We're talking taking, him. Yeah, get him on it. Taking some other probiotic. Well, see if he can do, see if it makes a difference with the nightly essence. Have him do nine a day. Okay, hmm. three three times a day. So you can do elimination diet, eliminate problem foods, link problem foods to the heartburn, and then eliminate them, and then do uh, and then do the good bacteria, the nightly essence. Okay. Okay. Then you want to start to help the, the restore the health of the environment that the bacteria are living in. And there's lots of ways to do that. One of the best ways is fiber. Have them grinding up flax seeds. Mm-hmm. Okay. Put it in water, or if he likes, he can put it in unsweetened almond milk and make himself a little pudding. That's what I do. Uh, you can uh, drink that down or, or eat it like a pudding either way. Have him do it once a day, maybe a tablespoon or two tablespoons. Any issues with his regularity, by the way? Is he constipated? Um, maybe a little, but okay. pretty pretty good on that. Okay, well, keep the fiber will keep him going. You don't even want a little constipation. The fiber uh-huh. will keep everything going, okay? okay? And then vegetable juices. Do you have a Vitamix or a high-power blender or Nutribullet, something like that? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. you have a Vitamix? Uh, no, we don't have that one. We, okay. we have another. But you got a high, you got a high-power one. Okay. The reason it's high-powered is you want the fiber. The, you don't want a regular juicer. You want something that will grind everything up real well. That's why, I like the Vitamix, the Nutribullet does it too. Have him do cabbage. Um, uh, actually, you know what? Have him do vegetable juices, but have him do cabbage soup. When you warm up the cabbage, you release some very interesting nutrients that can be helpful for the digestive system, for the intestine. Okay? So, vegetable juices and cabbage, and also aloe and noni. You're going to be supporting the, the strategy here is not to treat the heartburn or the, the reflux. It's to treat the intestine. You follow me? Uh-huh. All the things you've been doing that you told me, the calcium and such, that's to treat the acid. You don't want to treat the acid. You want to treat the intestine. Okay. okay? And I, I've had him, you know, I've been on the cherry berry um, from longevity, and that helped me a lot. Uh, my, reflux? For your reflux? Well, my intestine, you know, was having celiac. Okay. Okay. That's that'll that might be not be a bad idea either. I'm going to tell you uh-huh. a couple more things real quick. Okay. 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 Uh, sometimes a deficiency in stomach acid can result in belching and GERD and uh, reflux disease. Uh, uh, it's heartburn that he has. I take it right where he has a pain in his chest. Uh huh. Okay. So what he wants to do is he wants to help support the production of hydrochloric acid in the stomach. As we get older, we don't produce enough acid. So supporting the production of acid can be helpful. Iodine and zinc and the B vitamins. B vitamins you'll get in your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Have him doing that. He may want to go get himself something uh, something called Iodorol. You get that on the internet. Iodorol. And- Iodorol, and then make sure he's using zinc. It's incredibly important for everybody, but especially as we get older. 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate, second word, P-I-C-O-L-I-N-A-T-E, zinc picolinate. And this will help him make stomach acid. Also, starting off his meals with bitters or something bitter can help. Arugula, dandelion greens and such, you know what I'm talking about? Starting off the meal with something that stimulates his digestive juices, that might be helpful as well. Okay, because we take the, oh, the enzyme. Digest- and also, well, the enzymes are great. Keep taking that. Also, apple cider vinegar, I should tell you, too. Sometimes that helps. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 
We heard you talking about that last week, and we were wondering, like a teaspoon and a half glass uh, of water. Or you, what? you know, you don't really. A teaspoon's good. You don't, I don't dose. You don't need to worry about dosing. It's food, basically. It's incredible stuff. Apple cider vinegar for a lot of reasons. Number one, for the digestive thing, it activates the enzymes. It's it's amazing for uh, for uh, helping acidify the contents of the digestive system of the stomach, but also it's a wonderful source of of uh, support for, of nutrients or substances that support the health of the intestine itself, specifically short chain fatty acids, and that's why it works for diabetes. By the way, too, apple cider vinegar is wonderful for for helping stabilize the blood sugar. Everybody's wondering why apple cider vinegar could work, and I get letters. How does it work? Why is it so powerful? And people think it's some kind of old wives' tale. It's not an old wives' tale. Apple cider vinegar is a source of something called acetic acid, and acetic acid is a powerful precursor substance for the intestine and for the brain and for the blood and for the blood sugar. So plain old apple cider vinegar can go a long way. And taking that, you're staying at the beginning of the meal? With the meal, somewhere with the with meal. It. Okay. Yeah. Just dip, it's kind of dip along. You know, you could do a swig of it. You could do a swig or a ta couple yeah. tablespoons full. You know, half an ounce to an ounce. A tablespoonful is half an ounce, so mm -hmm. half an ounce to an ounce. But mix with some water. You can mix it with water. You can mix it with oil. I do it straight. But you, mixing it with oil, you can make a nice little salad dressing, or you can mix it with uh, just with water and drink it down either way. Okay. Okay. And what was the noni something you said? Noni, N-O-N-I. You can get it from Longevity. Call 866-735-2470. Ask them for the noni product, N-O-N-I. Really fascinating stuff noni is. All cactuses and, and what they call succulents, these are things that live in the desert that absorb water, are rich sources of really active medicines called polysaccharides, sugars, complex sugars, that nature has bequeathed them to hold on to water. Polysaccharides trap water. But they also, these polysaccharides, long chains of sugar, also have tremendous health benefits, especially for soothing the digestive tract. It's why the Fucoid Z is so helpful, and it's why Noni and Aloe are both so helpful. All right, Brenda, that's the music. Time to go. I apologize. I hope I helped you out. Okay, good luck with everything. God bless you. And that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Tomorrow we'll talk about one of the most underappreciated of all supplements, dietary supplements. It's a hormone-like substance, and I can't wait to tell you about it. Amazing, amazing, amazing for seizure disorders and for helping you sleep, for relaxation, for anti-aging. It can help people wean off of, uh, off of medication, off of drugs, off of marijuana. It's a, a really, really amazing substance. We'll talk about that tomorrow on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening, folks. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.